collaboration with NOAA CRED, the Coral Reef Ecosystem Division with Peter Room, was one part of what I did last year. And the other part was to complete um, seasonal data on Halamita Meadows. So I'm just actually going to briefly go through um, what I've been doing and looking at the spatial and temporal comparison of algal and coral abundance at Lanai with NOAA CRED and then go um, into the aspects concerning, because you know, I, if I can talk about how Alameda, I am. <laughs> so I go more into the um, consequences of the data that we've uh, finished in terms of seasonal abundance and such with it. So starting off, um, the work that I did with um, Peter Room was through NOAA, the Coral Reef Ecosystem Division, and of course, Cecilia Smith, my advisor at UH Manoa Botany. And um, with this project, initially, I was, there, I was eight, my abilities were um, available to NOAA CRED, and they said, okay, well, Heather, you can quantify our data that we have around in the, any of the main Hawaiian, main Hawaiian islands, so go, which one do you want? <laughs> and after looking at the data that they had, I was actually really interested in Lanai because I study Halamina Meadows, and there are some meadows in that area, but the data they had were from depths of about 15 to 20 meters, and I'll go into what sort of data they had, but there's not much that we actually know about how um, coral and algal assemblages at that 15 to 20 meter depth range vary over time um, from, um, at this depth. So I was really interested to see what they had and to see what this data was going to tell us. So the um, objectives of working with this Lanai database were basically to establish a species list of algae from 15 to 20 meter depths around Lanai based on algal collections that they did during 2005 and 2006. To assess the temporal and spatial variability in these assemblages and abundance at various sites and interpret these, interpret these patterns of abundance from an ecosystem perspective. So these databases that they collect go out with large teams and they collect fish data in terms of um, uh, fish abundance and species. They look at algal abundance, they look at coral abundance, they have um, physical parameters they collect such as temperature data and current data. And so what they wanted me to do was to take these data sets and work with um, the folks that know a CRED to come up with an analysis or interpretation of the data from the coral and algal perspective. And then finally, to determine possible differences in algal diversity among sites. So what I'm just going to briefly go through is overview of what we did, and then I'm going to move on into the Halamita, the Halamita work. Um, so the sites that they surveyed around the Na'i, um, and this is their numbering system, uh, was um, eight sites, sites one, two, three, uh, four, five, and six were surveyed during 2005. And then in 2006, due to um, problems with weather, they only um, were able to survey sites four, five, six, um, and seven, and eight. <coughs> so we only have a few sites where we can actually compare annual data. Um, the benthic data, again, these are photo quadrats and algal collections um, shown in yellow. And then temperature sensors that they had, they were able to bet out um, during both years at sites five and then at site seven. And then the type of data that they collected were basically REA, or Rapid Ecological Assessments, as described by um, Prescott et al. 2004 and Vroom et al. 2005. And most, most of you all here are probably very too intimately familiar with some of these processes. But just to describe it briefly, you have a PVC photo quadrat that you um, take a photo of the substrate. These are um, randomly uh, allocated, uh, 12 of them over a 25 meter distance. You assess the percent cover of the coral and algae and other invertebrates within that area. And then within each quadrat, photo quadrat, they collect all of the algae that is seen in that photo quadrat. And part of the reason for that is it is sure it's really difficult <laughs> to, get to identify turf algae and such from a photo quadrat. Big full of those things, yeah, sure, you know, we'll give it a go. But the small things and where a lot of the diversity is is in the turf algal assemblage. And so these collections are really vital in terms of understanding the species diversity and the coverage of what you're seeing above the general description of fuzz. So, um, in terms of the photo quadrat, what would they um, do is we use CPCE, um, as has been previously described, which is coral point count with Microsoft extensions, to calculate the percent cover of benthic organisms. Um, we use 100 points to describe that, and every point, uh, there's a description for every point, and we get it to the, the species um, when possible. And so on all of the coral validations, I work with Gene Kenyon in terms of verifying that it's actually identifying things correctly. And then with the algae, oftentimes, for instance, if you find a point in an area like this, you can tell that it's an algal turf, but you don't know what it is. And so that's where the species-specific information in terms of describing in that particular photo quadrat, the algal turf community that may be under that point, that's where that's really key. Um, and then the nitty-gritty then starts with those individual little bags in each photo quadrat. And then what's done is each bag is dissected 
using microscopes and dissecting scopes on each species it identified. So we have a species-specific list for all these photo quadrats and for all these areas between the years of the ones that were surveyed to identify what was actually there. And so what this generated based on the results is in terms of the algal collections, and this is definitely where most of the time is spent, is we have 361 specimens, including your barium sheets and slides, and we identified 74 genera of algae within these photo quadrats, including 98 species. So um, within these areas, it's fairly diverse, um, and it's interesting, again, to get this data at these depth. And of these, 53% were epiphytes or turf, so over half of what we find is that small, that small stuff that you see um, that we just sort of generalize as turf. Um, we didn't find any new species, at least that we can uh, verify so far. Um, we found a lot of um, typically red epiphytic, epiphytic algae. So um, the general trends um, is that uh, sites one and two were dominated by Hylomita conaloana meadows. That was where it was most abundant. Um, site three was basically a silt-covered coral reef, so the percent cover of coral was fairly low. Um, and then at sites um, four, five, six, seven, and eight, it was dominated by uh, Montipora capitata, Parides labata, and um, Parides compressa. Um, there were no um, differences in abundance between years for the sites that were surveyed. Um, and it, the reefs through here were fairly pristine in terms of low abundance of silt, low cover of macroalgae, uh, large and um, small. So it was a very interesting database. And then I'm working with uh, their tow board surveys that they have between all these locations to fill in the spatial information that we have concerning the percent cover of the dominant species. Um, and the final task then is to complete the manuscript working with the other uh, uh, ecosystem, the rest of the ecosystem for information and publish it in a peer-reviewed journal and then to submit all the algal presses and slides to the Bishop Museum for past studies. One of the real resources in this, as Dr. Abbott can testify to, is just having all the slides preserved of all of the algal specimens and using that as a reference to go back and be able to say, yes, this species was definitely present and at this location here are all the slides to identify it. So it's a valuable resource. So then moving on into um, the other aspect. So again, the other aspect of this project was to be able to go back to some areas in Maui and finish the seasonal databases for Halamita. And this is an extension off the project that was funded uh, in 2006, and that was Halamita Meadows in the Maui Nui Island Complex, looking at keystone species of a soft mythic reef communities, with that being Halamita. And it's a project done in collaboration with myself and Celia Smith, Frank Sansone, and Lyd Hanshin. And very briefly, you guys are probably all sick about Halamita Kanawana Meadows by now. Many of you have seen this many, many times, but just to go over it really briefly. Um, Halamita conalawana, which is formerly Halamita incrustata, it's a siphonous green alga, lives in sand, forms expansive meadows in, uh, in sand from 10 to 90 meter depths around the Maui Nui Island complex. And we have found sporadic patches. Dave Pence found some, as well as Matt Ross, have been observed on Oahu. And these meadows are highly productive, are a unique habitat and food source for many organisms over soft substrate. So if you were to go and take a swim through a Halamita meadow, you'd see a number of cryptic fishes, a lot of wrasses, uh, Ros Langson discovered a new record of knife fish, Simulunus pretexitus, found in these meadows. So there are a lot of strange little fish that you see in there. Um, there's a lot of urchins, a lot of Trypnusius gratilla, a lot of Echinothrix, the diadema, and um, calamaris. There's a lot of organisms that are packed in here, as well as epiphytic algae growing along the base of the Halamita and a lot of invertebrates in terms of polychaetes, such as fireworms, crawling along the bottom. And we even have observations of hawksbill turtles foraging in these meadows. So they're, they're important, and then there's a lot of it. And it occurs over a large depth range. 